Thank you. Um, so, this is me and Ted. I hope you're ready for your bedtime story for today. Uh, so we're here to talk about the hacking Teddy. Um, I'm going to give a little demo of Ted first before I turn him off because he doesn't sound very well. Um, so as it stands, Teddy is just what looks like a standard Teddy. He makes silly noises. And he looks innocent enough. Um, but he's got a camera in his nose and a, a, a battery powered and is powered by a Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm going to turn them off. This sounds a bit weird. But the my S3 pupils uh, started to do Craig Steele's uh, cyber security lessons. Uh, lessons like how to rob a bank and uh, there was other ones as well. Um, but the premise of those lessons was uh, pupils to learn Linux commands. Um, things like SSH, LS, Nano and Shell and Python scripts. Um, and from that, we, we had the idea that we, you know, we could look at possibly doing an award. Uh, so the the national, the level four award in cybersecurity fundamentals really sat well uh, with the third year group that we were going to do it for. Uh, so we thought we, we could kind of give that a go. Uh, but I was, I was kind of looking for, you know, an extension of what Craig said and a, a more practical way of uh, using what they've learned. So. We had uh, to practice their, their skills and uh, using Linux commands. We had a quite a nice combination here. We're, we used PyTops, and now a PyTop, if you haven't come across it before, is a Raspberry Pi encased in a battery, and it, these ones have nice screens as well. Um, but the friction there was we had to obviously connect uh, screens, keyboards, mice to use it. So we had the idea of uh, using both SSH and VNC to connect to the PyTops uh, on, on their Chromebooks because all the um, pupils in Highland obviously have access to their Chromebooks. Um, and I have to say, this setup worked really, really well for them to kind of practice their, their skills and uh, you know, just navigating a Linux interface. Um, and from that came the idea that we could potentially hack the smart board. Now, when we say hack, you know, it's, it's not technically a, a definition of hacking. Effectively, what we're doing here is we're connecting to a, a Raspberry Pi, and we're not even hacking the smart board. We're just we're just displaying a message uh, on uh, on the Raspberry Pi on the screen. Um, so our first year, we we tried hacking the smart board. Uh, we got the kids to try and connect to the the Pi, open up a text file, and change the text file, save it, and up comes their message on the screen automatically. Uh, we publicised that on Twitter, obviously. I've got some nice, uh, nice messages from Mr. Brown there. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, and and people really enjoyed that process, you know, because it was quite visual. It was instant. They saw, you know, the result of their their changes straight away on the screen, and it was kind of they, they celebrated that whole aspect of it. Um, but then, you know, I had the idea of a uh, kind of inspired by a. Uh, Bill Buchanan's idea of uh, hacking the toys. Um, now, obviously, you can't really purchase uh, hackable toys online, so uh, as much as I tried. Uh, so I had the idea of kind of um, making my own. I, I kind of wanted to raise awareness of the idea of uh, you know internet connected devices and the potential for uh, you know data being intercepted and uh, just making kids a little bit aware about you know all these IoT devices that are around um, and you know a, a healthy dose of skepticism uh, about using them uh, but I didn't want it to be kind of preachy or to kind of over exaggerate that you know every IoT device is uh, is hackable or is a security risk um, so I had the idea of you know taking te Teddy here and um, you know building something that is effectively uh, easy for, for kids to, to hack into. Um, so this is one of my son's teddies. Now, in the uh, teddy, there are some basic components. Um, now, believe me, this is nowhere near a professional product. It's you know, the Raspberry Pi in a case. Uh, we have a small amplifier. Uh, I stitched a, a camera in his nose, and the, the, the white cable you see in the screen is the, the camera cable. Uh, and then we have a small button on his arm and he's got a little speaker in, in his foot and it was presented to the kids as 
you know, this lovely cute little teddy, you know, please happy messages and so on. It's so cute, it's great. Um, but their challenge was to hack into the teddy. Now, as I said previously, it's, it's not hacking in, in that sense of the word because they are uh, effectively connecting to a Raspberry Pi over SSH and they're changing a few files and, you know, making something happen. In this case, what the, the challenge for them to do was, was two things. The first was to, to connect to the Pi, um, take a photo using the camera and email themselves the photo. Now, it's all done via scripts on the Pi, using the commands they've learned already, you know, ls, nano, and, and saving files and, and shell scripts. So I'm going to go through the process of uh, that the pupils went through when they connected to the Pi. Um, little caveat, they, all I told them was that the username and password for the Pi was the default username and password. Um, because obviously you want to change the default username and password and you want to kind of make them familiar with that whole uh, idea of changing default passwords. Excuse me, here. So they connected to the, to the Pi using their Chromebooks, using SSH on their Chromebooks. So the process of, uh, of hacking the Pi was just effectively start with SSH. As I said, I told them most of the details because it's not really a whole um, hacking process. You know, there's a lot of clues along the way as to um, how, how to connect it. So the SSH into the Pi, and as we told them already, default username and password for, for Pi. Now they already know how to use an LS command just to list all the files. Now, this is a uh, Teddy from last time he was used by people. So you can see loads of MPC files, which was the MPC files they downloaded for the, for the Teddy to play. Um, and there's also some shell scripts and there's some Python files and the uh, and text files as well. So the first challenge was to take a picture. So you can see obviously there's a, a file called takepicture.py. So it's fairly obvious to third year pupils what they're supposed to be doing. So they look in, in uh, first of all, they look in teddy.py. Now in teddy.py, they can see, okay, here's the code here for playing different NPC files. But that's not what we're doing first. The first thing we're doing is uh, taking the picture. So they come out of that, and hopefully they go into takepicture.py. And here we can see the simple code for uh, initialize a camera, take a picture, and store it on the desktop. So as, as I said before, Everything is sim as simple as possible to give them clues along the way as to what they've got to do next. So they've taken the picture. Now they're going to have to email themselves that picture. So obviously there's a file called send email. So they open up send email and there's a basic command here to send an email. Now all the pupils had to do in this case was to change it to their email address. And once they've done that, save it. Um, small caveat here. If you're ever planning on replicating this, I think a, a lot of services like Google now have turned off the ability for um, receiving emails from um, unauthorized uh, servers. So it doesn't actually work um, as it stands. So they sent the email and then they receive an email here like this. So, you know, the one thing that we saw from people doing this was the incredible enthusiasm um, when they eventually managed to send that email. You know, they had great enthusiasm when they hacked it, you know, when they connected to it, but when they managed to send themselves an email with a, with a picture taken through the Teddy's nose, it was just incredible uh, and worked really, really well. Excuse me. So, uh, and as I said previously, the last part was for them to, they, to change the, the voices on the Teddy. Um, we had many, many inappropriate things that Teddy said last year. Um, but, you know, as I said, the engagement that we had from pupils during that process and the enthusiasm that we saw, and not only that, but we managed to couple it with them, you know, gaining an, an SQA award in third year at the back of it. Um, it was, a, you know, it was one of those most valuable lessons I think I've ever done, done with kids. And uh, I'm definitely going to try and keep going and, and doing more along these lines. And you know, I, I'm not a, an electrical engineer, so these things are, are kind of hacked together. 
Uh, I'm not into sewing, so you know it looks a bit weird. But uh, as I say, the kids really love the whole thing, so I'm uh, I'm glad we did it. Um, it might take some revising to kind of keep these things going and you know keep these things current, but uh, they're definitely something that we that we enjoy doing. Um, so I think I'm finishing here, so if I can just stop that. Uh,